Across the dual carriageway in Port Glasgow is the launch site where 199 years ago, the first commercial passenger carrying steamship slipped into the waters of the Clyde. That launch was to rock the shipbuilding world and the tiny boat built by John Wood of Port Glasgow was to become the mother of the British steamship. Henry Bell, designer of the Comet, had a vision which was to become an anchor of the history of Port Glasgow and he was the primary player in the creation of the first passenger carrying steamship. The hull of the boat was to come from John Wood, Port Glasgow, the engines from John Robertson, builder of pumping engines, and David Napier was to make the boiler. The Comet was launched on the 24th of July 1812 and achieved a place in history as the first steamship to be run commercially in Europe. Tragically, the Comet was lifted onto the rocks at Craignish Point near Oban in 1820, and although no one was injured, the Comet's sea life had come to an end. However, Port Glasgow never forgot the achievements of John Wood, who lived at the corner of King Street and Scarlow Street. His father, John Wood Sr., had been employed by McGill, the first recorded shipbuilder in Port Glasgow. In August 1912, Port Glasgow held centenary celebrations to mark the anniversary of the launch of the Comet. Port Glasgow is well known for the landmark, which is the replica of the Comet. William Lithgow funded this memorial, which was to mark the 150th anniversary of the launch of the Comet. Sir William contracted George Thompson of Bucky to build the hull of the replica. Well, my name is Jim Parker. Uh, I serve my day as a painter, not in Thompson's, in the opposition yard. <laughs> Harry Mackenzie is just along the harbour. <laughs> but the yards had a good repertoire between each other and they helped each other out wherever good. Uh, I started, as I said, I served my time as a painter, then I became yard manager and director and then for five years or so I actually owned the yard and then uh, the yard was sold and I was still carried on. I finished up being there for 55 years. So I liked it so I just stayed on. <laughs> Good for you. Well, my name's John Addis. I'm an engineer, marine engineer. I served my time in Thompson Shipyard as an engineer. And at the time, I was seconded up to the boat building yard when the comet was about to be built. And my task was to operate the boiler for steaming the planks and assisting carpenters in the building of the court. That's my uh, Your role. My role involved with the court. Well, I'm James Stewart. I was a painter there. I went to the army. I served my time with a painter and decorator. And I came home to the army. I couldn't, well, I had a job for a week well. And I got a job at Thompson's boatyard. Which uh, I can't remember. Of. I was away in Bok again. Twice I was there. And I was there at the time the comet was being built. And I was painting it. You were in charge of painting? Charge of painting. My name's Peter Cowie. I'm afraid I'm an electrician. There was no electrics in the comet. But and Thompson's at that time, when things were to call, were all called up to the yard just to lend a hand. That's why I have the photos of the comet, was just helping the rest of the chaps to get around the trolley and that, and also just lend a hand just as whenever possible. I'm sorry that tonight that uh, Mr. Thompson's junior was to be here, but I think he's been called away to hospital, which is a pity because he was really looking forward to Come out here tonight. What can you tell us about your experience of helping to build the PS Comet replica? 
Very little. Nick's <laughs> 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 something on you. John is near it. I, as I said, operate the boiler and steam the planks for the building of the comet. And it was usually about two planks we put into the steam box one time. And to seal the box, you used sawdust and hardened bags to once it and got the pressure up, steamed it for about a three quarters an hour, an hour. And to me, other carpenters would have their, they'd be playing in their other planks, mm -hmm. ready to go in when we took it, that two out. And there was like two squads, a squad for each side of the boat. Uh, because to get the planks up sooner, equal at each side. Did you find they were pliable enough after an hour in the steamer for the bow? Oh, for, for a bow, yes. Yeah. That's yeah. why you had to hurry with them. Because, because you had to go run as fast as you could. Uh, and because we had only a couple of joiners, because as I say, the grant and loans for the fishing boats stopped and most of the men were paid off. And you had to do whatever is... Uh, Peter said, even though we were engineer, we were, or a, mm -hmm. we, we did Training whatever. Skills, it's uh, <laughs> yes, we had to do whatever, we had to assist as much as. We Blank was put on and then it was bent and there was big Clamp. clamps and this thing yeah. up to pull them back into place. Well, the uh, operation we were doing, we were just taking a couple of boards off at a time and then aye. replacing them, aye. you know, and then taking another. Of course, yes. I think you have to mind, that was being built from the. Right for the keel up. Aye. So that was why it made it be tight, as tight as it could. And uh, then after that, they had to put in the oakum and that to aye, make it water so tight. Mm -hmm. We're having trouble at the. At the well, we're just, uh, I'm just curious to how you achieved the, the shape of the, the twist at the back, where it goes from vertical to, to, the to get the twist to in the plank. To yeah. horizontal, aye. within about four feet. Uh, then that, that, that's, that was that's done as well with the lads on the frames. Uh -huh. They had the wee kaiches mm -hmm. and they shaped the, the frame yeah. as it was coming round so and it would be flat. To to get flat, to get flat the against it. Uh, but they pulled it down with a clump. Oh, yeah. they crumped it down with a clump. Clumped, clumped it at one end and then moved along a bit and clumped it again. Clumped it the other way. Until you got the twist in. Mm -hmm. You left, left these clumps on until you got their fixed. So know how you say you work for a rival shipyard. Do you remember a comet being built here? Ah, oh yes. Was it quite a, um, I don't know how can I say it, sort of well-known event here? Event. Yeah. Well, it was a prestige mm -hmm. for, for Bucky, for that to be built yeah. here. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The part it was built, the, up in the road there, was just full of folk watching, being loaded on the lawn. It was about 10 away, yeah. It's the same thing as launching a boat. Uh, it they were just doing it to water. There was no, is there a boat out there waiting to catch it? They just wanted to go. So you talked about um, the comet getting put on a trailer. Yeah. So yeah. Could you just tell us about the, the comet, as I say, was built in the shed. So then to get the comet outside was a daunting task in itself. <laughs> <laughs> because we had to, everybody was involved with tackles and whatnot. And if I think the right, she was pulled. For the right course. was far up, the yeah, stem was nearly touching the office, uh -huh. uh, looking out the office window. And then you had to pull her side, her steering had to be pulled sideways round to get her to line up with the door before we could pull her out. Um, uh, it was a slow uh, process. Uh, Not manpower, just manpower. And, and a lot of logs, it was, it was using rollers <laughs> to take her out. And then, we had the, once we got her, you'll see the photographs there, out, we had to jack her up. And if I think, I might be wrong. 
in the thick stroke, we had the bower holes and put in uh, jokes in the side so that we could put in uh, showers. So when she was being jacked up, they put more blocks underneath. So it had these showers on each side. There's four of them. Kept the weight, mostly the weight. Kept the boat in an even keel.